Hello. In my last speech, I talked about some of the great benefits of industrial hemp products. Now, it was originally the nutritional benefits that got me interested in the subject, but as I began my research, I learned more of its uses and also some insight into the controversy surrounding hemp. More specifically, I learned about hemp laws in the United States and how they came to be about, and was a little surprised at what I learned, which is that they really have nothing to do with marijuana use, but a lot to do with corporate lobbying on behalf of industrial competitors of hemp. Today I'm going to talk about hemp laws in the United States and how we would benefit if hemp were legalized. First I want to make it, I want to point out that I'm using the term hemp rather than marijuana because as I see it the marijuana debate is nothing but a distraction from the bigger picture. For example, you'll constantly hear debates about whether or not people should be allowed to smoke pot, but you'll never hear a debate about whether or not we should legalize a plant with hundreds of other uses besides getting people high. Now I always know that there's going to be people that argue that we need to take whatever measures we can to keep pot off the streets and out of the hands of children. So I'll put it to you this way. The government can't even keep drugs out of prison, let alone out of the hands of its citizens. Anti-drug laws have had very little effect, if any at all. In fact, according to the book Marijuana Conviction, The Legal History of Drugs in the United States, Marijuana use is several times higher now than it was before its federal prohibition in 1937. But as I will explain to you shortly, these laws were never meant to discourage marijuana use. They had other purposes. And if you're still not convinced, according to John McCabe in his book, Marijuana and Hemp, History, Uses, Laws, and Controversy, hemp farmers would actually be a scourge to outdoor marijuana growers as their flowers would actually be cross-pollinated with the low THC hemp, effectively destroying the marijuana crop. So yes, growing industrial hemp could actually hurt marijuana growers. Now, by, sure, by now you're surely asking, if we didn't create these laws to discourage drug use, then what is the reason behind them? As I mentioned in my last speech, in the 1930s, Machines were invented to process hemp, which made hemp once again a serious competitor in fuel, power, and paper industries. Now, before the 1930s, the federal government had no interest in whether or not anyone smoked marijuana. And coincidentally, as soon as hemp became a major competitor in these industries, corporate lobbyists were up in arms over marijuana and wanted to do something about it. And who were these corporations? Well, the DuPont family, for one, created chemicals which were used to process paper from trees and they also produced fertilizers and pesticides for corn and cotton growth. Because hemp can be grown without fertilizers or pesticides, it can be, the, the uh, hemp paper can be processed without the use of chemicals. DuPont was going to face serious cuts in their profits and were not too happy about it. On top of that, William Randolph Hearst, who invested heavily in paper mills, and Timberland for paper processing was unhappy about the growth of industrial hemp as it would replace the trees that he had been chopping down. So how did he respond? Uh, all he did was allow false marijuana reports to run in his papers in order to spread a hysteria about a drug that most people at the time had never even heard of. It was this lobbying from industrialists and the false reports which eventually culminated in the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 which levied, levied such a tax on marijuana use, or on growing hemp, that it effectively destroyed the hemp industry. Ironically, most lawmakers who voted to ban this drug had no clue that it was connected to the hemp plant, or that in the midst of the Great Depression they were about to destroy an up-and-coming industry. So why is this important to you or me? Because, as you're probably well aware, in Colorado and Washington they recently voted on legislation concerning the legalization of hemp in their respective states. Now it passed, but still I can't say that I'm not concerned because I still feel that most people in those states didn't know what they were voting on. For example, 47% in Colorado and 44% in Washington voted no on legalizing marijuana. But if someone had informed them by voting no, that they were in fact voting no on removing harmful pesticides and fertilizers from the environment, and at the same time voting yes on chopping down more trees, I have a feeling that the results would have been more strongly in favor of growing hemp rather than cutting down trees and dumping chemicals into the earth. But when the media covers this, all you hear about is marijuana use, and you never get the other side of the story. 
In conclusion, I've talked about the reasons behind hemp laws in this country and some of the ways that we could benefit and the environment could benefit from growing hemp. My hope is that should you ever get a chance to vote on hemp laws in your own state, you can now do so having been informed on what you are actually voting for. This is not a drug issue, but an issue spun to appear that way by corporations with profit from keeping hemp illegal. Thank you.